Hey there, so you're thinking about moving to Baltimore. In this video, I'm going to give you the top 10 reasons why I think it's an excellent idea you move here. You want to hang around for number nine because you don't want to miss that one. That one's a doozy and we're going to get started right now. I'm John Ruckman, I'm the Charm City Property Dude, and in this video, we're gonna go ahead and give you the top 10 reasons why you need to move to Baltimore. But first, before we begin, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. I'm gonna put that right about there. <laughs> there you go. Make sure you hit the notification bell for this video and all the other great videos. And go ahead and submerge yourself in the videos because these are the latest and greatest and newer information about everything you wanna know about Baltimore. And hey, I wanna move into Baltimore. There's also the surrounding counties, and of course, I'm a real estate agent, so I can help you with that too. So the first thing I love, 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 love about Baltimore, Maryland and this, Maryland in general is the community spirit that we have within the city. We are so proud of everything about Maryland. I'm so proud of Maryland. I have a Maryland flag on my arm. That's how great that is. Uh, we love our sports. We're very passionate. Now we're not quite as arrogant and, and as ir, uh, arrogant as Pittsburgh. We talk shit about Pittsburgh all the time, but we really are passionate when it comes to Baltimore. We're passionate when it comes to our sports. Um, it, I would like to say it's the city of brotherly love, but that's Philadelphia, Philadelphia slogan. But here in Baltimore, there's a tight knit community and everybody here is really um, engaged with that. I go down to the city all the time when I'm in Canton, when I'm in Fells Point, everybody's like, hey, how are you? So we're all real friendly here. You still have to keep your city wits about you, but we do have a great community of people here. Number eight on the list of things that I love about Baltimore is the scenic Chesapeake Bay, the Patapsico Park, State Park. There's all these great things, all the history, the monuments, everything that is incorporated into Baltimore City, like the Inner Harbor, for instance. You can walk around in Inner Harbor, you see the Science Center, you see the aquarium, you see the Constellation, you see the old Chesapeake battleship that has the, it was the medical ship. There's not a place in Baltimore where there isn't some sort of scenic view of like the city. For instance, like Federal Hill Park. If you sit on top of Federal Hill Park, you have this humongous flag up there and you have the cannons, and I apologize for the chirp in the background. We have these humongous cannons that overlook the city and there's not a bad view anywhere on Federal Hill Park, but that's like Canton. There's not a bad view off the waterfront park. Uh, Fells Point, you got the square. So that's the one thing I really love about Baltimore City is the scenic views and there's always some place you can go to see that. So that's number eight, the scenic views. Okay, so number seven, one of the reasons why I think you should move to Baltimore is the close proximity to the city. So you're really close to Philadelphia, you're like 90 minutes away from Philadelphia, you're about three hours away from New York, you're an hour away from DC, so you're never too far away, <laughs> sorry about the chirp, you're never too far away from those cities and those jobs. So that's the one thing I like it, I mean you can instantly get on 95 and you can either head south or you can head north. Now I'm going to tell you that the traffic at certain times of the day is terrible, but if soon as you get acclimated you know what times to stay on the highway and stay away from the highway, you'll be perfectly fine. But I love the fact that you're just so close, you can go south to the beach, you can go south to DC, look I'm pointing like that's the direction. You can go to New York or Philadelphia. There's also Wilmington, and the other good news is, is that Amtrak actually goes to all those different places, so you're never without the reason to be able to get on a major highway and go anywhere else. Number five, and this is a very important one. <clears throat> No one, and I mean no one, is more passionate about their sports and their sports teams than Baltimore. Now, you might get some rogue fans from Pittsburgh. I've been to Denver, I've been to Florida, I've been to New York. I think Boston might come in as a close second, but no one. We have like the Baltimore Ravens, and there's not a tougher football team out there. The Ravens are a smash mouth football team, and we all love it. Now, do I say you go to the game? Well, every once in a while you can go to the game downtown, but usually I like to watch it from my recliner, go to my bathroom and grab my beer out of the refrigerator. It's a lot cheaper that way. And you also have the Baltimore Orioles. The Baltimore Orioles are hit and miss. And you see you got that Baltimore accent flowing. The Baltimore Orioles, hun, got the Baltimore mix there. The Orioles are great, but a lot of times the team, they usually do 500 every year. 
but they never really have their pitching and their hitting going at the same time. But when they do, then we can start playing those old commercials where it used to say, Baltimore Magic. So anyway, I love the Orioles and I love the Ravens. Now you also have like a, the, the, um, the, um, <clears throat> the Miners. You have a Frederick team, you have the, Baltimore, uh, the Bowie Bay Sox, and you also have the Aberdeen Ironbirds. So if you want a really close-knit game, not so big as like the Orioles, you can always go to Bowie, or you can always go out to uh, Aberdeen and catch the game. And when I say the games are excellent, and the great equalizer to baseball is the wooden bat. As soon as they introduce the wooden bat, it makes the game a whole lot different. It's nothing like a little league game when you have the aluminum bat. It's almost like a tennis racket, tink, and the ball goes way out. So no one, this team, I mean, this city is so passionate about their sports that we can talk about this for days and days and days over a stack of crabs and some beer. That's what we talk about as the sports. So number four, I know it's been said a bunch of times, it's been said many, many different ways, but Baltimore is like the seafood capital of the world. We have the boiled shrimp, we got the steamed shrimp. No, I'm just kidding. We got, you know, we got crabs. We talk about that all the time. And crabs are really not a meal where you go and you fill up. Crabs is more of like get together with the family. You're picking crabs, drinking beer, the kids are running around in circles, have some uh, corn on the cob, and that is about a four hour bullshit session. <laughs> And that's what we do. We go eat crabs and we BS with everybody and we talk about the day's events. We talk about the politicians. We talk about when the sports teams aren't doing really well. That's what we talk about. Uh, but here in Baltimore, you can get you can get steamed crabs anywhere in Maryland. You can go down to the ocean, like Ocean City, but I'm telling you the best places to get crabs are right here in the middle of Baltimore. If you want shrimp or oysters or mussels, you can all get that here in Baltimore. And the best part about this is no matter which area of Baltimore, like Federal Hill, Fells Point, Canton, you go up to Hamden, Mount Vernon, Roland Park, each one of these places, I guarantee, has a restaurant that serves all the seafood to you. So you don't really have to go the variety of different places, but it's really fun if you do. So if you explore, and find the different places that have seafood. Now, I'm telling you, there's great steak places too. There's great Italian. You got Little Italy for Italian, you go to Chipperelli's. But Baltimore is well known for seafood and especially crabs and crab cakes. So if you want a great meal, if you love crab, crab cakes and seafood, you're awesome. If you have a shellfish allergy, you might want to consider Pittsburgh. I'm just saying, just saying. Now, I'm just kidding. All are welcome here in Baltimore and the food is plentiful. Three. No place in the world are you going to find more culture. So you have the variety of different museums. You do know that Baltimore was like part of the original 13 colonies, Maryland was. Baltimore was, a, was the home of the Star Spangled Banner. And of course, there is no place in the city that you can't go that doesn't have a museum or something that reflects back to the colonial days. You can see along the top of the houses all the different uh, distinct, distinctions of the colonial houses and the colonial period. Now, all the investors have gotten down there and they've renovated everything inside, but the outside still has that old timey feel. And there are parts of Baltimore that you can go to where the streets are this close together, um, right up like near the, the uh, Lear Denyon. Uh, the Baltimore BSO. So up there at like northern towards Mount Vernon, you can tell the streets are really close together and there are throwbacks everywhere you see to like the colonial days. Now I have some old pictures on Facebook that people have been sending me because I do these videos, but I get these old pictures of like before the Constellation was sitting there, before, I mean, you could still see the old dirt roads, really, really interesting. And of course there was a humongous fire back in like, 1904 that pretty much destroyed all of Baltimore so they had to rebuild it all again but you go like to Canton you go to Fells Point you go to uh, Federal Hill you go to Locust Point all these places you go to you can see the throwback to all the culture and everywhere in the city there's a museum there are cannons there's the colonial houses the colonial styles so that's number three thing I really love about Baltimore is the culture the museums and all the throwbacks to the all right so that brings us to number two I forgot what number two is. Oh. <laughs> so that brings us to number two, job opportunities. And I, when I say job opportunities, I'm talking about jobs that start at six figures. You know, you have 
the health industry, which is John Hopkins Bayview, you've got Franklin Square Hospital, you've got all these different hospitals and they're all hiring for your know, nurses, doctors, the cardiologists, you've got the radiologists, and those are all really good paying positions. And you have all the support staff that comes in behind those, and most of those jobs go right up from like fifty to hundred thousand dollars a year. Now you have support staff that's cleaning service that may not be that. You have your DOD job, so you have the Department of Defense like literally everywhere in town. So there's no shortage of jobs within the Baltimore, Maryland area. I mean, if you want to work for Under Armour, they got the big uh, place down there in Port Covington with Billy Planks. You got that big. Those guys make great money. You also have Amazon, which the warehouses are popping up everywhere. And that would seem to be rightly so because this is the East Coast. And what I've heard is that 11% of the population is going to live between Baltimore and New York City. So that brings in a lot of that opportunity. And not to mention all the retail jobs. I mean, Target is a huge provider of uh, jobs. And you have jobs everywhere from the 200,000s all the way down to your minimum wage. So there's no shortage of jobs in the city. The problem is, or the opportunity is, is that a lot of times you're gonna need, definitely need a car to get yourself around to the variety of different jobs, unless you live directly in the city, but sometimes you don't wanna live in the city. You're out, you wanna live out in the county, so you're definitely gonna need a car. So that's the number two thing, are jobs. Jobs are plentiful. Number one, one of the top 10 reasons why I think you should move to Baltimore, and that is affordability. Now, understandably so, that our prices here are slightly more than national average, but still cheaper, a lot cheaper than New York City, a lot cheaper than Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love, and DC, forget about it. So the average sales price in Baltimore City is about 350. So, and the taxes are usually about 1% of your purchase price. A lot of the places you don't have to worry about HOAs. You do have to worry about the cityness of the property, but the, on affordability scale, the food, the transportation, the parking and all that is slightly above average, but with the jobs and all that in the city, makes housing here very, very affordable. And there you have it. That is the top 10 reasons why you need to move to Baltimore City. And if you don't want to move to Baltimore City, there's always the surrounding counties. I understand completely. Listen, I really love putting this video together. And if, I mean, I get phone calls and text messages and emails from folks just like you every day, and I really love it. So if you call, text message, or email me any day, night, or weekend, don't worry. I respond to all my phone calls, all my emails. Yes, I respond to all of them, even though I got this comment from somebody the other day that wasn't quite appropriate, but I still responded. I thought they maybe thought it was a dead number. But anyway, I, de I defer. If you contact me, don't worry, I've got your back when it comes to real estate. And I'm gonna go ahead and do this right. Go ahead and check out this video right here, maybe that video right there. And again, completely submerge yourself into the channel. I've got the latest up-to-date information about Baltimore City and the surrounding counties. Thanks.